I woke up this morning to a million texts that Donda was finally out. I didn't believe it at first, but I opened Apple Music and there it was, in its full 26 track, hour and 45 minute long glory, Kanye's newest studio album. I'll be working on a track by track breakdown of the project for later this week, but I thought I'd take this video to analyze the rollout that brought us here, Kanye's three part listening party theatrical experience that took us from Atlanta to Chicago. Kanye put these shows on not just to introduce his music, but to tell us a story, a story about his career and his journey and his growth as a person, but putting him mask on and being like a silhouette of a person until the final moments, as well as legally changing his name to Ye in the middle of all this, the most used word in the bible used to mean you, are his ways to relate his path from heartbreak and darkness to salvation and faith to everybody watching and listening. He went from Kanye, which means only one, to being Ye, all of us. So I want to talk about two different ways of seeing the rollout that go hand in hand before going into the specifics of each listening party and its symbolism. The first one is a journey through Kanye's career. I'm thematically seeing similarities between them and different eras of his music over the past decade. The first reminds me of his bounce back from what was once his lowest low, coming back to the VMAs after losing his mother, his lover, and his reputation after interrupting Taylor Swift, presenting his response to the backlash runaway in an all red outfit on an empty white stage in front of a crowd that hated him. Next is his dark Jesus era of anger and frustration at politicians, paparazzi, the music and fashion industries, at a listening party where he introduced songs with disses and themes of fear and paranoia. And then finally to his Pablo era, a reconnection with his faith and his decision to choose family and love over his ego, despite all the darkness around him marrying Kim Kardashian, and finally letting go of Donda and his childhood, taking her lessons about faith with him and starting a family of his own. But the structure of these parties and his journey also happens to fall into place as a modern retelling of Dante's Inferno, an epic poem where Dante too narrates a story about himself taking a journey made by all of us, through hell, purgatory, and then finally to heaven. To delve into how this plays out, I'll be taking a closer look at each of the parties and the symbols and messages that you may have missed throughout them. In his first show in Atlanta, Ye presented a raw, unfinished album to us, alone on a wide stage. This stage and his performance was a look into the blank slate of his mind at the start of this decade, the unstable mind he was battling with which must have felt like a hell after the years of destruction of his reputation and identity. The tracks were raw to the point where the show was like listening to his own thoughts and emotions, even playing back entire monologues by Donda as if remembering her words and advice in his head when he was at his lowest and needed them the most. He shows the most raw pain in this listening party, falling to the ground crying that he's losing his family. In this moment, Ye recognizes the circular nature of where he is in his life right now, losing Kim, and where he was at that point, losing his mother. And while in that era he dealt with it with the extravagance and embrace of fame, the pursuit of perfection that dark fantasy embodied, here he deals with it by recognizing his imperfections, laying them all out in his mumbling and shouting onto the tracks, and searching for answers in the lessons of his mother and his faith. In Inferno, Hell is a crater made by the fall of Lucifer. So here Ye is laying in the crater of his own fall, his own shortcomings and mistakes, grappling with it all, facing the full wrath of the pain it brought him, but ready to move forward and atone. This is the only listening party that has Jail as the last song, a track where he details owning up to his mistakes, preparing to go to jail or face the consequences for them, but confident that God will post his bail or allow him to move forward and not be stuck paying for it forever, transitioning perfectly to the Atlanta party that followed. Before that second party even happened, Kanye made a small room in the Mercedes-Benz Stadium into his own personal studio. Names that circulated calling it a jail cell called Kanye's point exactly. This was Kanye doing his time, putting in the work and personal growth needed to atone. In Inferno, Purgatory is the place of suffering where sinners purge themselves of their sins and we got to see it all happen on a live stream that kept running even overnight. Ye was visited by friends, went to sleep, worked out, and even shaved some people bald on some monastery vibes. All part of his personal process of atonement, a process similar to the one he went through when he escaped to Wyoming to deal with the mental health issues in the era where he dropped Ye. The story's progression and the songs he debuted by the time the second listening party hit mirrored these themes directly. He moved off the grid to Wyoming for the sake of keeping himself and his family safe while undergoing this process. Although in pursuit of holiness, growth, and purity, this also must have been an era of frustration and anger, as it must be for people in jail, vengeful that they have to put up with their imprisonment. This is represented by the darker, more vengeful tracks that he debuted, like I'm Not Okay, coming after Drake and owning up to his mental instability. You get the sense of this paranoia. Kanye feels targeted by the 
industry, the media, the public, just society as a whole, the way any prison inmate would. And he lets these frustrations out in an angry, dark, aesthetic display similar to Isis. Throughout this process, towards the latter half of the tracks in this listening party, like many people in jail do, he turns to God and gets closer to his faith as a way to cope once he's let out all of his anger and the negativity that his struggles left him with. Debuting the song Jesus Lord, for example. At the end of the song, the phone call sample of Larry Hoover Jr. is the perfect example of him now incorporating the frustration with the system with the need to heal and grow through religion and unity. 24 plays with the reassurance that God's vision is not finished and that he'll be okay, and that we're not meant to stay in the place of repentance, but to rather, finally, like Dante in Inferno, rise above it and escape into paradise. No child left behind while he makes that escape, a representation of how no one will be left behind in purgatory if they're open to that healing, and no one should let anyone else be left behind. At the end of the show, Kanye takes the step that Dante takes by ending the show rising above Mercedes-Benz Stadium, getting closer to the mother that left him behind here on Earth, and getting a glimpse of Dante's final destination, paradise. For Kanye, that paradise, his turn to God and religious salvation here on Earth, was mentally back in Chicago, the root of his religious belief, what Donda once taught him as a child back in his childhood home, represented by the beacon that is the cross on the top of his replica house. Ye reconnects to his roots, his mother, and his religion, back in this home that's surrounded by dark forces, shadowy figures, and all the black cars constantly circling. It's the force of God that keeps him protected on the porch, the same way Donda and her teachings kept him protected from the outside world while he was growing up. I do think his decision to include Marilyn Manson is disrespectful to victims of his sexual assault, but the symbolism and connection to the themes is clear. Both him and DeBaby on the song Jail makes them the newest examples of those who need to atone for their sins, and in Kanye's eyes, have hope of salvation through serving their time and then turning to God the same way he did. Manson is the perfect example because he's as far from religious as you could get, but so was Kanye at the start of the journey he outlined through these parties in his dark fantasy era. So Ye is making the statement that even in the wildest extremes of mistakes, Jay shooting his brother, DeBaby going on a homophobic rant during a concert, you could still turn to God and turn your life around and not be left behind. I also think his use of new story templates on the screens throughout the stadium overlaying the action on the stage, with the headlines being Bible verses, is a comment on the role the media plays in bringing people down methodically and making that change in salvation seem impossible. Finally, Ye ends this show setting himself on fire, with his original plan being setting the entire house on fire, symbolizing finally letting go of Donda, Chicago, and his childhood, now that he's ready to start his own family, and the recreation of his marriage to Kim Kardashian, whose attire is reminiscent of the project's previous album cover, is the moment where he finally takes off the mask and reveals his own personal ending, the moment where he takes that step and chooses family and God over everything as his priorities going forward. The journey he takes through these concerts, through this album, is a journey he believes is possible for anyone at any stage of it. And if this is Kanye's final album, a project where he combines all his styles and eras into one, I think this performance was the perfect summation and conclusion to everything we've seen and heard from Kanye West. As always, this was just my interpretation. Leave yours down below. I'm really excited to hear them, and thanks for watching.